the return of Travel Explained Summit. There are still certain travel restrictions in place, but countries are beginning to welcome travelers again. How will travel look different from the voyages of years past? And how you and I can stay safe as we explore the world. I'm excited to welcome our first speaker live to Zoomer Hall. Vivian Vassos is the executive editor and resident travel specialist at Zoomer Magazine and EverythingZoomer.com. Welcome, Vivian. Thank you so much for having me. So you have an exciting travel background. The first question I want to ask you is where are you going to go first? Well, first I'm going to travel for business because I need to bring back the story to the Zoomer readers and our Zoomer audience. I'm going to Las Vegas for a conference that focuses on the United States. So I, a lot of our readers, a lot of our audience here have places in the US. They wanna know when they can go back. Family is really important to them. So it's key that I visit somewhere where I can come back and tell that story. And travel's been removed from our lives for the past 18 months. So how has that affected today's traveler? How are we looking at things differently? Well, we have no choice. We have to look at things differently. It's very important that we understand what travel is to us, what it was, and what it will be. And I think that, as you said, as for someone who gets on a plane monthly, it's like a completely new world. So we, it, it has changed, but there are so many protocols and so many places and people that we can go to, experts that can tell us the best way to travel now. And is there anything different that you're doing to prepare, even like to go to the airport? Like, is there anything that you're changing about how you used to travel? I think I'm gonna, yeah, I think I'm gonna pack a bit lighter. Right. <laughs> Definitely pack a bit lighter, take more time. And I think that's another thing. Patience is going to be key as we travel, even as we go to the grocery store. So it's really important as we get out there in the world, whether it's our own backyard or getting on an airplane. So masks, of course following the protocols. We're very fortunate we do have a government that has put these things in place to keep us safe. And governments around the world are also doing that, whether it's a PCR test or an antigen test. More time at the airport. And again, patience and masks, masks, masks. So it's, it, that's really key. And we just saw a few days ago that Canada has opened up the world again to international travelers. Um, and they're also telling us we need to be more patient at the airport. Um, so do you have any advice for people as they're looking to travel to other international destinations? Well, always check first. Actually, uh, the, gov the government of Canada has a website that you can check other destinations. So make sure you check. Speak with a travel advisor or an agent. Go with a group. Go with a, a guided tour because they take a care of everything from the minute you get to the airport till the minute they take you back to the airport. These are really key sort of players, part of the travel team that I think we all need to uh, enlist to help us out to navigate the world now. The guided tour, that's good advice because for those of us who still might feel a little apprehensive about traveling, at least you're in the safety in numbers and, and comfort in a group. Exactly. And so for those who might still be thinking, I don't know if international is where I want to go right now. I know short haul and local flights have been really, or local trips have been really exciting. I know for myself as a, as a British Columbian, exploring my own province has been so fun. So can you tell me a little bit about travelers who are looking more to staying domestically? I think Canada is remarkable. First of all, it's and especially in the fall and winter, we know we come home for a lot of great reasons. Thanksgiving, the high holidays, Christmas, all of these things. So family and friends are the most important thing. And we know from our, our audience, they tell us that family and friends are the first things they're going to do. So in Canada, you can get in the car, you can take the train, uh, airplane, I mean, and it's quite safe. So the protocols are, are really in place. The other thing about Canada is you can do things here that you thought maybe you could only do other places. Safari polar bear safari, caribou migration, the great migra migration in, in the north of Canada, northwest Canada. So you can do these things here that you thought you could only do in other places. So I think when we're looking at Canada, it's, it's an emotional thing as well because a lot of our friends and family are here. It's, it's, it's what do we mean, what does it mean to be Canadian now, especially with what's been going on? So exploring the indigenous culture that's part of our fabric as who we are as Canadians too. And other black history, Asian, Asian culture, all of these things that really make us Canada are the things that I think we can be doing now in our own backyard. So I need to go back to something. Polar bear safari? <laughs> yes. What is a polar bear safari? Well, in Churchill, Manitoba, it's quite a ways north in Manitoba, you can actually 
take a safari that takes you out to the ice flows so that you can see these amazing creatures that really are nowhere else on the planet and uh, see them in their natural habitat. So rather than going to see the big five, although you should in, in, in South Africa or in Kenya, but you can see the polar bears here. That's amazing. It's cold, though. <laughs> I, well, I'm very excited about the thought it, yeah, of going it's, on a it's, polar bear It's definitely safari. colder than it would be going to Kenya or to South Africa. Right. And so what incentives are there right now for people to travel? I mean, there's tons of deals that I'm seeing and, and lots of really cool excursions. So are there any incentives that you have your eye on? Booking in advance planning in advance. And we have to keep in mind that this is an industry that was almost decimated. So when you're thinking about a deal, you actually have to think about yourself and you're investing in yourself in the experience. So I don't really t tend to talk about price. I tend more about what's the value that we get out of travel and that psychological happiness that we get from planning it and from, from really uh, getting excited about going somewhere, and, the, and we know science tells us there's a happiness quotient to it. Of course, when we get a good deal, we're even happier, so that's key. But I think really booking in advance, taking advantage of, of those sort of bonuses, and farther, the farther in advance you book, the more incentive you're going to find. Again, travel advisors and agents, they can really sort of uh, find those deals for you. But uh, keep in mind it, that it, it is an industry, again, that has, has had a hard time. So you do want to contribute in, in a meaningful way in, in many ways. And so I don't talk about price too much. But. Right, which is a good thing. Uh, and then you talked about contribution and value in travel. And when I ran into you in the makeup room, you're wearing this beautiful dress. So can you tell me the story behind this dress? This dress is, was made by a women's co-op in Rwanda. And this was, again, I would never have found this place if I hadn't been with a group tour, a small group tour. And so through travel, a lot of the corporations, companies, airlines, hotels really do give back even though it may not be transparent, it's within their nature, within their own fabric. Communities all over the world really benefit from travel. Everybody from the hairstylist in the hotel lobby to, to the pilot that's flying you there. So this was amazing because travelers had, had seen this potential and had donated one sewing machine wow. and a lesson in sewing. And now it's a, it's a, it's a, a working, living, breathing women's workshop where you can buy homeware, dresses, and they're supporting themselves, which is fantastic. That's, that's an amazing story. And just by hearing that story and seeing the dress, it makes me feel more connected to Rwanda, a place where I've never been. So thank you so much, Vivian. It was such a pleasure talking to you today, and I'm excited to follow you on your next journey. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you.